What is up guys, my name is Jake, and if you're wondering what it's like to get an Eversense CGM inserted and what it's like to live with it day by day, I've got good news for you because I have been through it, not just once actually, but twice. But before I can talk too much about it, I gotta do a quick disclaimer that this is just going to be my experience. It is not medical advice in any shape or form. Do not get medical advice from some random dude on YouTube. Always talk to your doctor. And also, extra disclaimer, that this is part of a, a medical study and it has not been approved by the FDA, at least the version that I'm using. And but I know that the insertion process and uh, everything else, the adhesive that I use every day is identical to what is on the FDA approved advice. So this should be pretty applicable if you are considering ever since. And on that note, since it is an investigational device, I'm not gonna be able to talk about accuracy or anything like that, but I can talk about my experience in the insertion and what it's like been living with it day to day and changing patches every day, stuff like that. So first let's talk insertion. So what they do is they take a huge needle and they numb you up. I was smart and didn't look at that needle beforehand, but when I looked at it after, I was like, wow, that's a big needle. Um, anyways, they take that. So first thing that they do is they have a little like stencil and they draw like a line this big, just with like a pencil. And, and they draw this little line and that line is where they're going to, to slit you open. And then, you know, they do three shots, one in the middle and one on each side of that line. And honestly, going in, the needle didn't hurt too bad. Maybe like on a scale of one to 10 is a two pain wise. But then once they started actually like injecting the anesthetic, I'd, I'd say it's like a five or six on a scale of one to 10. Um, not unbearable pain by any measure, but you know, don't, don't feel awesome. Uh, and that lasts probably about 40 seconds between all three pokes. Uh, and then they give you a couple minutes, let that anesthetic kick in, and then you're numbed up. And personally, after that, I didn't feel anything. Some other people in my trial said they felt like pressure, but I didn't feel anything after that. And it was pretty quick and seamless after that. Uh, if you're curious what they do is they just, they use a device that creates like, they, they poke a hole in you basically. And then they, they slide the little tic-tac thing just in where that hole is. And then they use stair strips to, to close up the wound and then put some gauze over it. And you, you will have some bleeding, um, but that's it. I'm a week and a half post-surgery and, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it heals up pretty quick and pretty clean. So all things said and done, insertion really wasn't that bad. And I was probably in and out in 20-ish minutes. It was not bad at all. But let's talk about living with it day to day. So every day, I mean, you have to take it off to charge it. And they recommend that you do that when you shower, which I do. And, and then after you get out of the shower and the device has been charging, they, they give you a ton of these little patches and this side peels off and then you put the, the reader there and the other side peels off and it's just an adhesive patch that you put on the arm and that the app uh, has like a little placement guide that shows you, hey, this is a strong signal, I'll put it here. I'll be honest, the fact that you have to do it one-handed is pretty cumbersome. Like it's not easy. I've, I've done it at least 10 times by now and I've gotten better, but it is not easy. So this process, honestly, it's almost as big of a process as changing in Dexcom. You know, not quite as much because you only have to deal with pairing codes and stuff, but it's like barely a step below it. And the fact that you have to do this every day is kind of a annoying. <laughs> and honestly, if I were to consider this to use it as my daily CGM, I probably wouldn't just for this fact. And the fact that you need to calibrate at least once a day for the first 21 days right now, you have to calibrate twice a day. And then after that, it's just once a day. But the fact that you'd have to calibrate at least once a day every day and you know charge it up and change the patch and it only lasts six months, I probably would avoid it right now. At least I would. But you know, looking at the future and what they have announced as their plans and what I'm in the study for right now, I what could possibly be down the road is a device that lasts a whole year. You know, this trial that I'm on, it, it's for a whole year because they're trying to prove that it's effective for a full year. But it can be a device that lasts a full year and the trial that I'm on doesn't require any calibrations. The other groups have required one calibration a week. Uh, so if everything goes well with these trials, hypothetically, 
what we could have is a device that lasts a whole year and requires no calibrations or requires just one calibration a week. And at that point, I would strongly consider that. And that's because this hypothetical device that I hope does come has some pretty big advantages. Um, I'm a pretty big Dexcom fan, but if it's just one device that you're paying for and your insurance is covering, then hypothetically, you're looking at you know a quarter of the cost of a year of Dexcom, because most insurance will treat this as a 90-day prescription. So you're looking at a quarter of the cost of a year of Dexcom. Maybe you have to pay for the insertion and that you know is the same price, but even then you're looking at half the price of what Dexcom would cost you the whole year. Also, with Dexcom, you have days like this, right? Um, where it's just noisy and you're getting inaccurate readings. This actually was day five of a sensor, so the sensor hadn't even been that long. This is a Dexcom G6. Uh, and then, of course, the Dexcom failed the very next day. So I only got six days out of that sensor. That This is something that, hypothetically, you would be able to avoid with this sense. And of course you have a lot less uh, e-waste as well. You know, with the Dexcom G7, it's awesome that it's one device and all, but that means that every sensor that you're throwing away, you are throwing away a battery and a Bluetooth transmitter. And honestly, this is something that really bothers me. And it's something that bothers me about using um, Omnipod right now. So right now when I throw away an Omnipod, I have to throw away a battery and a Bluetooth transmitter and a processor and that, really bothers me. There's no way to recycle it. And I, I acknowledge that it's bad for the environment. And it bothers me that Dexcom is kind of going this way too. Again, it's a huge advantage to the customer, but it bothers me that there's going to be all this extra e-waste. So that is something that you would avoid with using the Sensionic sensor. So yeah, I mean, I'm two weeks into a one-year trial. So obviously this is far off down the line. You gotta wait for this trial to finish and then pile all the data, have it approved by the FDA. So, you know, optimistically it's 18 months, but realistically it's probably going to be a lot longer. But, you know, if this device does come to market, then you're talking about a device that is cheaper than a Dexcom, probably more accurate. You'll definitely have a lot less of those bad noisy days and is better for the environment. And that's a strong case. Uh, I would need it to work with my pump because that's a huge deal to me, but it would work with Android APS uh, ever since right now it can work with Android APS. So would I switch back to Android APS and use this year long sensor? I absolutely would, given those parameters. But of course, that's just pure speculation right now, but fingers crossed, I'm hopeful. Uh, anyways, that's been my quick thoughts on insertion and, and living with it day to day. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have, please uh, like this video, consider subscribing. I got a ton of other videos about Android APS and Omnipod and, and stuff like that. So if you're into diabetes tech at all, check out my other videos and we'll see you guys in the next one.